thank you for inviting me talking at this great workshop. I'm Sho Sonoda from uh, Waseda University, and uh, today I'm talking about uh, transport analysis of denoising autoencoder. Uh, last year I have earned a PhD, and uh, this talk is uh, based on the half part of my dissertation. So, my base basic research question is uh, what happens in a deep neural network? Uh, this is a sketch of deep neural network and uh, we input still image from left side. This is called uh, input layer. And uh, uh, then the neurons fire and uh, blinks and communicates information from left to right. And then at the final layer, the red one, called uh, output uh, layer, the neural network says uh, camel 98% and uh, rug 88%. So there is some information transformation in the neural network. So my research question is say, uh, what intermediate fire firing patterns represent? So this is my best question. And uh, there is two approaches. Uh, integral representation theory and uh, transportation theory. And today's talk is mainly about uh, transportation theory. And uh, the integral representation theory is uh, the theory of shallow structure. And the transportation theory is the theory of deep structure. Uh, so integral representation is really interesting and uh, profound theory. But well, this is, today, uh, this is just promotion. Uh, we reparameterize hidden parameters as an uh, integral and introduce Richard analysis. This is a friend of wavelet analysis and radon transform. And this is, for example, used for uh, proof universal approximation property of neural network. And uh, this is really interesting because uh, SGD minimizes uh, and the Richard tra transform uh, coincide. This is uh, emp empirical knowledge. Uh, but uh, there's cons and pros of integral representation theory because this is a uh, theory for shallow structure. So we cannot use this theory for deep neural network. And, uh, uh, and also, this theory just says that the neural network can approximate for example, L1 or L2, or continuous function on compact sets, blah, blah, blah. And uh, they don't say uh, any anything about uh, what they approximate, basically. So I go further. We have to go further that what a neural network approximate. OK, uh, let's move to the main topic. So again, the what happens in a deep neural network? And my answer is uh, transporting. And my answer is that uh, a deep neural network transports data points from left to right. So I mean that uh, we regard the feature vectors as uh, Euclidean coordinates. So for example, uh, MN is the case. Uh, in input, input, uh, input field, we regard uh, MNIST, uh, MNIST data as a 28 by 28 vector. And uh, also, we also regard uh, intermediate firing as a 1,000 vector, 1,000 dimensional vector. And uh, in, the in, this new, in this new neural network, uh, in left side, as a, as a beginning, as a input layer, that every digit are mixed. So, but uh, in the last hidden layer, every digit has to be uh, separated because the output layer is usually a linear classifier. So, what I have to do 
is to determine the transport map. So which transport map is uh, approximated by neural network? This is my research question. Okay. And uh, today's talk is that uh, we determine the transport map of denoising autoencoders. Okay. Now I explain the denoising autoencoder. A denoising autoencoder is a neural network G that is given a deliberately broken input data and trying to restore the original data. So in the equation, the G is neural network and uh, we input X plus epsilon, X data and the epsilon noise and input X plus epsilon and uh, train neural network to output the clean input X. So in the figure, the corrupt, corrupt data is uh, smoothed. So inherently, this training is ill-posed. I mean, the inverse problem. Because uh, some, some information of original data distribution is lost. Okay. And this is the our first first contribution. So denoising autoencoder have the global optima. Uh, the glo the denoising autoencoder training is equivalent to the minimization problem in equation one. So the LG means uh, so we input x plus epsilon to neural network G and uh, measure the squared error and take expectation with respect to x and the epsilon. Uh, this is the meaning of L. So the denoising autoencoder training is uh, equivalent to minimization of this LG, right? And the theorem is that uh, global minimizer is given by equation two. And in particular case, when the noise is Gaussian, then the minimizer is given in three. So, and the uh, transportation analysis, we interpret this gx plus gx equal x plus delta x. We regard this as a transport map. Okay, uh, both both equation in two and three, there is a form that uh, x plus something, right? So we regard this as a transport map. Yeah, this is a uh, short proof. A uh, proof is directly following by a uh, variational calculus. Uh, first change variables, this is just technique. And use first variation formula. Then the, vari uh, the, then the first variation is given by this equation. This equation. And uh, the minimizer needs to satisfy uh, this variation equals zero for every direction h. Uh, this implies the integrand in the bracket equals zero for almost every x. Uh, then, which is reduced as the g star e x equals blah blah blah. So this is equation two. So this proof is totally non-parametric. We we assume that any assumption. Uh, on the uh, noise distribution and data distribution, and we didn't use no asymptotics. Okay. So uh, there is another proof of equation second by statistics. Uh, I say that uh, minimizer g star denoising autoencoder is a statistic statistical estimator of the mean parameter x, given an observation x tilde, right? Then uh, the, uh, the denoising autoencoder should be the posterior mean x given x tilde. And uh, by calculating this posterior mean, we have the g star x tilde again. So we can believe uh, my proof. And in the special case, when the noise is Gaussian, then uh, 
the Gaussian mean zero and the uh, covariance matrix is, is gi given by Ti. Then we can use uh, Stein's identity. This is a char characteristic formula of Gaussian, so we can use this formula only for Gaussian. Then we can eliminate the multiplication operator epsilon in the gstar as below. A multiplication, I mean the here. Here is really difficult to calculate, but uh, in Gaussian case, the epsilon multiplied by noise distribution Gaussian is replaced with the derivative of Gaussian. Then the equation reduced to the derivative of convolution. So th this form is a derivative of f over f. Then the equation reduces to the derivative of log of f. I. And this is the equation 3. Uh, this is the transport map of denoising autoencoder when we use uh, noise, Gaussian noise. OK. So far, we talk about uh, point transportation. And uh, next, we talk about uh, uh, data distribution. OK. In association with, in associated with uh, mass transportation, the data distribution itself changes shape from mu zero, data distribution mu zero, to mu t. And the uh, reshape, uh, deformed shape is dependent on the noise, noise level t, as in the figure. And our second theorem is that uh, for Gaussian denoising autoencoder case, as t tends to zero, the mu t develops according to the backward heat equation. So backward, I mean that uh, there, there is a negative sign before the Laplacian. Uh, if, if we don't, we, if there is no po positive Laplacian, then it is ordinary heat equation. And this, this is al always happens in, this often happens in nature, but uh, negative Laplacian is not natural. But uh, we can understand this equation because denoising autoencoder is an uh, estimation process. And the equivalent, this is, this equation is equivalent to the Wasserstein gradient from uh, Wasserstein gradient flow with respect to Shannon entropy. Equation six. And we use uh, partial T in equation five and the uh, dot in equation six. This is because uh, in equation five, this is uh, PDE. Partial differential equation on RD, RM. On the other hand, uh, 6 is uh, ordi ordinary differential equation, ODE, on the space of uh, probability density functions on RD. Okay. And the proof is like this uh, first, take uh, limit t tends to 0. Then the initial velocity of the mass transportation is given by the Fisher score. This is a corollary of the theorem one. And, and this is limited to the Gaussian case. And then substitute uh, V0, this is flux, uh, in the con continuity equation, nu t mu t equals minus divergence mu t v t. Then we have the backward heat equation. So continuity equation is uh, uh, is is is, depict, de, de, is explain the relation between the flux and the time evolution of mass dis, mass density density of mass. Okay. And then uh, by substituting the flux equals uh, Fisher score. The nabla log mu zero equals uh, the nabla mu zero over mu zero and the two mu zero cancels. Then 
the it, it, it reduces to minus divergence gradient mu zero, and this means the Laplacian. So the negative sign is from the continuity equation. And because the uh, forward heat equation corresponds to a positive gradient flow of the channel entropy, then the backward heat equation corresponds to the negative gradient flow. Okay. So far, uh, this is a summary of objects. Uh, we start from noise distribution, nu t, and uh, derives the transport map and the uh, flux, vt. Then the corresponding, di corresponding data distribution is according to continuity equation. And uh, there is one-to-one -one correspondence between Wasserstein gradient flow. And in this, uh, in this talk, we assume that the nu t equals Gaussian. Then the flux is Fisher score, and the continuous equation is heat equation, and then the gradient flow is with respect to Shannon entropy. Okay, this flow. And uh, there's one to one relation between Vt and F. Okay, this is uh, one excellent visible closed form toy example. Okay, consider the space Q of Gaussians of form mean zero and uh, the covariance matrix is limited to diagonal covariance matrix. Then this is a two-dimensional subspace of all probability density on R2. Okay? Uh, this example is uh, really excellent because the Wasserstein distance in Q is given by closed form 9, and the Shannon entropy is closed form 10, and trajectory of the gradient flow Shannon, uh, with, with, res with respect to Shannon entropy is given by 11. So we can visualize this function space in two-dimensional Euclidean space. Okay. And the gradient flow has, uh, is depic de depicted as this flow. Okay, then we move to the deep denoising autoencoder. Uh, first, consider the shallow Gaussian DAE. Uh, the trajectory of shallow Gaussian DAE is also given as equation 12. And uh, this trajectory uh, has same di uh, ha has same velocity to the gradient flow only at the initial initial moment. And as time t get increased, the gradient flow and the trajectory go apart. Now consider the deep neural network case, the composition of Gaussian DAE case. I mean that uh, we iteratively train denizing autoencoder and uh, take push for the measure of data distribution and uh, uh, train another deep, deep denizing autoencoder and uh, compose it. Then uh, every connecting moment here, every connecting moment we can expect that the uh, velocity vector is parallel to the gradient vector. And uh, we consider the limit. Delta t tends to zero. Then we can expect that the uh, trajectory tends to meet the gradient flow at every t we can expect. And we can consider, uh, we can imagine a conti continuum limit of deep DAE that satisfies uh, mu dot t equals minus gradient Shannon entropy at every time t, okay? And we can understand the uh, deep denoising autoencoder as a Eurarian approximation of the continuous DAE. Uh, Eurarian approximation, I mean that this is a, a, a broken line approximation. 
And this is simulation result. Uh, this seems to support our theory, or uh, in particular, the previous part. And this is summary. So the research question is what is happening in a deep neural network? And uh, my answer is uh, mass transportation. So determine the transport map of denoising autoencoders. The stat statements non-parametric and coordinate free. And the depth is also parameterized by transport, par transport time t. And the proofs did not use asymptotics. Uh, I also introduced the continuous denoising autoencoder and analyzed the deep denoising autoencoder. So by introducing continuous denoising autoencoder, we can uh, we can accept any number of hidden layers. And the uh, generalizations will be, for example, we use Gaussian today, but uh, in future we can use uh, Q Gaussian. This is related to the Tarris entropy and the porous medium equation. And this is the denoising autoencoder case. And uh, a supervised case, I think this this will be modeled by a multi component system like uh, water and oil. And in particular, we can regard the skip connection in the residual network. This will be a transport map. Okay. This is the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention. So do you have any comments? And questions? So, um, uh, can you give some discretiz discretization um, error analysis? Or for example, maybe um, we want to approximate the delta G by uh, some neural networks. And so, uh, can, we can you say something about that? Yes, yes. Uh, I did, did not evaluate the uh, error, but uh, the strategy is to estimate the uh, uh, curvature of this gradient flow and uh, this trajectory. Mm -hmm. Then we can estimate the uh, uh, error. And uh, so the discretization strategy will be the to upper bound some, some error some accumulation okay, error. So in in the Gaussian case, the curvature is very mild. mild so what, uh, what happens in some other uh, distributions? Can in can general you case? Uh, for example, in a uh, classification case, uh, uh, for example. Oil, oil and water uh, ah. interaction? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, it's really, really interesting, and but uh, maybe a little difficult. Okay. So I, I, I mean, I think this is very beautiful um, mathematically. So the question is a bit, when I want to learn from this to actually make the networks better, you know, for example, you know, linking to the talks before, like of um, Pierre or so. So is, it, is there, <coughs> you know, can you say something about, in the light of your results, you know, whether how the networks should should be in order to make this flow particularly nice and well behaving? Uh, well, this is a good, important question. And uh, uh, one strategy is to avoid using neural network. <laughs> <laughs> Use Wasserstein, uh, for example, EMD. As move the distance, yes. <laughs> then, then you can control more uh, net con con control approximators, may maybe. Okay. So, any other questions or comments? No. So, okay. So, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.